We're born into pain. We're born into a world that's full of liars and it's full of people that will take advantage of you. One of the biggest regrets I think I have in my life is not taking the time to listen to other people. Even if that means I have nothing to say back to them, just taking the time to listen to other people because how they feel means something. My name is Jeff Stuckel. I was born in South Korea. My birth mother gave me the name Kyung Mo Kim. And the day I was born, she gave me up for adoption in a, in a small town in Illinois. And that's where I grew up. There was always a sense of um, distance between people and me. And um, I guess I tried to uh, identify with anything that you know I could and the only thing I could at the when I was younger was with uh, was with music there came a point in my life where I was like if God is real and what the Bible says is his word it's pretty much like a yes or no either it's everything or it's nothing. And if it's everything, then I have to run after that. He revealed that he placed me exactly perfectly where I was supposed to be. That wasn't a mistake. That, doesn't, that makes you so you're not afraid anymore. You're not afraid to speak. You're not afraid to, to go different places, you know? You're not afraid to like hop on a plane <laughs> and uh, go halfway across the world with just a backpack on. I kept playing my head and I decided, you know what? Whatever, I'm, what I have to lose, I'm gonna go do this. So I hopped on a plane and I dropped myself into some of the most uncomfortable situations I've ever been to in, in my life uh, with people that I didn't wanna be around. Um, I had a huge chip on my shoulder. I had a bad attitude and uh, you know, I thought people were against me. And uh, I quickly learned that, that that's not really the case. Um, really changed me. But I came back home. I got a girlfriend. By the end of our relationship, I was burned out of everything. I tried to do everything myself. The thing that she told me right when we broke up was like, you're, you have this selfishness within you. And um, I couldn't disagree with her. And, uh, packed my bags again and I took about five changes of clothes with me in a, in a hiking backpack and I went to Amsterdam again and I, uh, I thought I was going to only stay for a month and I ended up staying for three and I, and I thought I was supposed to be helping other people but uh, God had a bigger plan of trying to heal me. I was like listening and watching a sermon by my friend Danny. And he was talking about the left-handed tribe of Benjamin, uh, the smallest tribe in Israel. Right-handedness uh, culturally during that time was what well, was accepted as good. Left-handedness was weak. The tribe of Benjamin, their strongest warriors were left-handed. They did everything left-handed. Really spoke out to me the fact that God uses the unexpected, the people that are cast aside, people call worthless or losers you know for his will because I, I see a lot of me in that you know I, I am a left-handed son and knowing that has freed me from so many things and from people's expectations from my own criticisms I just want everybody to be able to feel that kind of freedom so that's why I'm hoping that um, this album will accomplish the light that's been shed on me that I could just reflect a fraction of that to those around me. That they're loved, that they're worth something, and they're not alone. And realizing some people don't have choices, so I better be wise with the decisions I can make. I can't talk to everybody. And to be honest, sometimes I've given up on face-to-face -face conversations with people. But I know 
that with art. It's like a big enough neon sign that people listen. I just want to honor people's stories at least to be able to show that they have some sort of value. And this is the only way I know how. <laughs> That's all I got.